start. Uh, I know, you know, you said like you were playing soccer. So obviously you were uh, kind of an athletic uh, kid uh, coming up. Uh, and uh, so when did you start wanting to getting involved with like transplant games and things like that? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, thanks for the question. The transplant games are just a wonderful experience, you know, U.S. and international with a caveat if you hear about them. And that's, I think, one of the, the big things that, you know, we can all work on together. I mean, I received my first transplant in 1999, but I didn't hear anything about any games until my second transplant where a nurse, you know, came in and just mentioned like, oh, maybe you should look into the games because, you know, through getting to know me, she knew that I was athletic before. Sure. The transplant and thought, you know, he might really enjoy some sort of physical activity sure. um, afterwards. So, you know, once I found out about it in 2007, and then, you know, maybe a few months later, I figured out, okay, 2008 is a year from now, I'm going to do it. So um, I got a bicycle, my parents actually got me a bicycle. And I started riding it, and went to uh, Pittsburgh for the, the US games in 2008 for my first first time around, and I was able to get four medals. Uh, the first, the first games I participated in. So it was really a wonderful yeah. experience. And one of those was uh, gold and cycling. So, you know, it was, I was pretty happy. <laughs> what, what other games other than cycling, what other, what other things did you do there in the transport yeah, games? The first Welcome to Hope with Jonathan. I'm Jonathan Trailer, kidney transplant recipient. Based on my near-death experience with kidney failure, we now spotlight kidney patient story, giving them a platform to express their personal journey with battling kidney disease, kidney failure, dialysis, waiting for kidney transplant, and much more. We share stories of hope right here on the Hope with Jonathan podcast. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Never let hope become a memory. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. what's going on zach hey how you doing jonathan good to see you good to see you too friend how are you tonight i'm uh, great I and mean, this is super exciting to uh get to talk to you in this format and you know participate um you know with other transplant people out there uh in this great thing we're, we're doing together with sharing the stories and and sharing the love ultimately so i'm just really excited to be here Absolutely. Uh, Zach, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and all that great stuff. Sure. Um, well, I'll start with the thing that you might see over my shoulder here, which is World Transplant Athletes. Um, we have tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime and online. And our motto is really simple. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are world transplant athlete. So I could talk about that a little bit later, but since uh, it's uh, behind my, my head, I thought I would start with that. That's cool. Um, I like that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with some, some basics. Um, my name is Zach Brooks. It's a pleasure to be here. I've had two kidney transplants. Uh, the first one I received in 1999, and I was fortunate to receive that one from uh, my dad. That was at Stanford in Northern California. Awesome. And then... Um, that went very well, but as um, these things happened, <laughs> um, I had to get a second one about seven years later. And fortunately, my mom was a match and she donated um, her kidney to me the uh -huh. second time around in 2007. And that was at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. So okay. um, you know, first and foremost, for, for this audience, I'm, I'm a 
transplant recipient like you and like many of the people who are, are watching your show. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I was kind of reading over a little bit of your uh, a story on uh, your uh, Dr. Z uh, podcast uh, website. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's on your Facebook page. And I was reading over that you were going to play some soccer or something and ended up hurting your foot. And that's kind of how you found out you had kidney disease. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was very active growing up. I played lots of sports. Soccer was my, my best sport. I ended up playing in college. I actually played in Europe when I was 17 for about a month. It was with the Turin uh, American team. We we're about... 50-50 um, in terms of our, our record. I think we won 10 games, lost 10 games, maybe tied two or three. So I was able to play soccer mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. And so lo and behold, you know, seven years later, 10 years later, I was 28 um, at the time. And I was playing in a sand soccer tournament in a place called Santa Cruz, California on a, on a beach. Mm -hmm. so I went to kick the ball and sand, it looks all fluffy, but actually it can be a little bit hard if you kick at the wrong spot so sure you know, immediately i knew my toe was kind of messed up but i just limped off the field you know when you play sports a lot you think oh no big deal i'll just i'll be fine but then sure. uh, i really couldn't walk uh, very well so i went to the doctor mm -hmm. and i hadn't been to the doctor you know he's a young guy you know it, it's like i'm healthy but you know i haven't been to the doctor for five years just go ahead and do all of the blood work that's it was just like a a throw a throwaway comment like no big deal i'm fine Right. And one thing led to another. Um, I, I wasn't, you know, my, my kidney function was not great. I came back two months later. And at that point, the, the numbers were just trending, whatever my, my hands are doing here, downwards in a really uh, fast way. Yeah. And I had to do dialysis. And I well, what was the overall diagnosis, though? Was it like FSGS or lupus? Oh, or? yeah. No, my case, um, it was IgA nephropathy. Okay. Um, so, you know, the listeners probably know. So I, the main causes of kidney failure are, um, you know, diabetes, uh, polycystic kidney disease, hypertension. Those are kind of the, the yep. big, big three. And at the small end of the tail, there's about two, the 2% club is something called IgA nephropathy. And IgA is a protein. It swims around in your body very naturally. But, you know, with someone like me, it swims around, but either it's too, too big or yeah. there are too many of them, and eventually it damages the kidney. So that was the, the diagnosis. Yeah. IGAN is kind of a uh, rare uh, form it, it, that causes kidney failure or kidney disease. Um, it is pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. I, you don't hear of a lot of patients. I do know of a couple other, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's you're right. Uh, you know, predominantly is uh, type 2 di you know, diabetes, hypertension, uh, chronic kidney disease. Those are the you know, top two leading causes, uh, diabetes being number one, hypertension yeah. number two. And then you hear a lot of cases of, poly, you know, PKD, polycystic kidney disease, lupus. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, the, you know, FSGS is, a, is getting, you know, sort of common. I hear a lot of patients talking about that. But IGAN mm -hmm. is one that you really don't hear a lot of. Uh, another one is uh, Alport's, uh, which mm -hmm. also affects your hearing as well. Oh, wow. So uh, that one's, uh, you know, uh, I think in the same league is probably IGAN. It's pretty pretty uh, uncommon uh, diseases, but I, I, I don't know, maybe they're gaining a little bit of ground. Uh, you know, maybe it's more common than I, than I think, cause I, I don't know much about it, but uh, yeah. so, so from there you, it, it sort of progressed and then you ended up on dialysis. Yeah. So um, it was, I think it was uh, June 28th, 1998 was the day I broke my toe. Um, you mm -hmm. know, some by early July, the doctor said, no big deal, come back. I went back sometime in September, and then I started going back to the doctor a lot. Um, and it was somewhere between so September through um, February, the following year. February is when I had to start dialysis. And maybe like a lot of, of your listeners, I didn't want to do dialysis at all. To me, hearing that word was worse than a transplant. So I started, you know, exploring all these diets and I went to, you know, various, you know, well-meaning people, let's say, who wanted to help with uh, nutrients and vitamins and massages and, you know, all this sort of holistic style of holistic uh, medicine. And yeah. I, I learned a lot from that. And I really still carry a lot of that with me. But none of those folks ultimately could help me right then. And it 
what, what really happened for me is I, I was, like I said, I was really trying to avoid this. I asked my doctor, well, what if I just don't do it? You know, I was so stubborn. Right. He said, well, you'll die within eight days. Mm. Now that, that changed changes, your mind pretty quickly, huh? <laughs> it changes your perspective on things pretty quickly. So, yep. um, yeah, I had to, I had, did peritoneal dialysis. I, I'm not very good with needles. So I got the peritoneal, which is it goes in the belly and you have to do, do these exchanges. And that worked pretty well for me because I'm a pretty independent person. So I could be on the computer and, and still do that. So, and then that time around, the first time around, I only needed to be on dialysis around eight weeks. And it was just to get my body kind of prepped and ready for the transplant uh, that I got from my father in 1999. So sure. it, was, uh, it was really fortunate. Gosh, I'm a really lucky guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, most definitely. Um, so your mom was your first donor. Uh, no, my dad was my first. Your dad, your your father was your first donor. Okay. Yep. So your father was your first donor. Let me let me ask you a question because this month is uh, National Donate Life, and, and you know we're trying to talk to people about uh, you know signing up to be a donor and, and those type of things, and, and which is an amazing uh, gift of love. Uh, but you know some people have problems with the um, the conversation, mm-hmm. kind of starting that conversation. Of course, you know him being your father, it was sort of a probably a no brainer for him. He probably just, you know, but can you talk a little bit about how uh, that process kind of started for your father to become your donor? Yeah. Um, sure. I'll, I'll share. And I've, I've also heard from people who have different conversations with their families. So I have a lot of respect and love for, sure. for everyone in those moments, but um, yeah, it was very clear. I, I remember I was on the second floor of an apartment Mm-hmm. where I was living in Palo Alto, California, uh, near California Avenue. If anyone knows where that is, it's just across the street from Stanford. Yeah, that's uh, that's where Apple and all that is, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> area. You, uh-huh. know, it, you know, at the time, it was not quite as uh, Silicon Valley popping as it is now, but right. it, was, it was still popping quite a bit. So I remember the, the, the time of day was kind of late in the evening. My mom, my dad, and I were all talking. And my mom, I think it was the one who said, you know, Parents are just supposed to die before their kids. Wow. So my parents were, were ready, you know. Yeah. And they, uh, they wanted to do it. So anyway, that was a, a special moment, obviously, too. Uh, obviously. To, well, my, my parents uh, said that. It's one of those things you hear in life that uh, – it's so profound, right? You, you can't, you, you can never sort of comprehend, uh, sure, comprehend that. So anyway, I, I didn't expect uh, that, Jonathan. But good job to ask a, a good question there. I ap- I apologize. I, I <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's definitely okay, so, a a sense of subject. I understand. Oh and no, no, it was it was a good question. Um, so I you know I was really fortunate, but my parents were you know. They didn't know they could donate at that moment, but that was their mindset. Like, we are absolutely going to do everything we can to donate if we can. And sure. then just a short time after that, um, they received notification because they went to the hospital within a couple of days and got their blood drawn that they were uh, donors. So, you know, uh, the conversation was with both. And my dad at that moment really stuck his hand in the air. Like, I really want to do it. But both of them were ready. And um, in the 2007, when the moment came again, my mom, you know, she's like, well, I'm going to do it. You know, absolutely. So, you know, they're a very good team as a, as a couple. And, you know, I was really a uh, beneficiary yeah. of, of so much uh, love and support. And also from my, my family at large, my brother, um, he was, you know, there as well. And um, a lot of really good friends and family in my life. So and, and loved ones. Anyway, yeah, you're, I, I, there's a long, long answer to your short question. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's it's actually a very beautiful answer. Um, your story is so incredible because the fact that, you know, your parents were, uh, you know, the same blood type or uh, as you are, you know, or a match uh, for you, uh, it was in, in, incredible. Uh, yeah. So, like, I'm, are you an O or A or B or A? I, or? Don't, I think I'm an A, but I, I should know, Jonathan, but... <laughs> I definitely hit the genetic uh, jackpot. One of my parents was a four out of six, and one was, I think, a two out of six. But 
you know, whatever the case was, they were just going to connect it with the medications. You know, if you're Amazing. a little slower of a match, they give you a little bit more medications. Yeah. You know, I, I just got extremely fortunate. So I, I feel like um, my really good luck in this life, um, you know, I really have to work hard to pay that kind of energy right. forward. Those, those blessings don't come around in life very often. So if you, you happen to experience them, it's really an obligation to, Absolutely. to share. Absolutely. So. So let's talk a little bit about uh, you became an athlete. Uh, when did that start? Uh, I know, you know, you said like you were playing soccer. So obviously you were uh, kind of an athletic uh, kid uh, coming up. Uh, and uh, so when did you start wanting to getting involved with like transplant games and things like that? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, thanks for the question. The transplant games are just a wonderful experience, you know, U.S. and international with a caveat if you hear about them and that's i think one of the the big things that you know we can all work on together i mean i received my first transplant in 1999 but i didn't hear anything about any games until my second transplant where a nurse you know came in and just mentioned like oh maybe you should look into the games because you know through getting to know me she knew that i was athletic before sure the transplant and thought you know he might really enjoy some sort of physical activity sure. afterwards so you know, once I found out about it in 2007, and then, you know, maybe a few months later, I figured out, okay, 2008 is a year from now, I'm going to do it. So um, I got a bicycle, my parents actually got me a bicycle. And I started riding it and went to uh, Pittsburgh for the, the US games in 2008 for my first first time around. And I was able to get four medals. Uh, the first, the first games I participated in. So it was really a wonderful yeah. experience. And one of those was a uh, gold and cycling so you know it was, i was pretty happy <laughs> what, what other games other than cycling what other what other things did you do there in the transport yeah, games? the first one was uh swimming and running so kind of the triathlon sports mm -hmm. and um and then you know the following games i've done you know lots of other things lots of running events and lots of cycling events um, multiple swimming events uh, volleyball especially at the, at the um, united states national game level at the World Games, it's much more competitive, so you really need to to focus and and train like crazy because the World Games are, are a whole whole other level. Yeah, how how cool is it to connect with other uh, transplant recipients um, uh, there at the at the World Games or or you know a, those type of uh, events? Well, it's kind of like what we're doing now. I mean, there's a certain energy we have with each other as fellow recipients. And I would include, you know, a lot of family members and, you know, some other folks in that, you know, nurses and doctors and so forth. But, you know, I think we all feel a little bit weird and strange when we go through this. I mean, you know, we have our normal lives and then we have to go through dialysis or medical treatment in some form, you know, if you have a liver a transplant or heart. And we're kind of separated from a lot of the world in some way. Now, we, we learned to get through it and be happy and live with it and so forth. Sure. And then we come out of that experience. I think a lot of us feel kind of isolated and, and as wonderful as it is to be alive, we still need that, that social touch. And I, I think the thing, the thing about the games and it's every games is the, the same experience is that, you know, you don't have to explain yourself to another transplant recipient. They just get it. Yeah. And you feel normal. And that sense of normalcy is such a precious thing i think that's you know over overriding that's the every games i show up i just feel normal and yeah. ironically i almost never talk about my transplants and neither do they now if they want to you know i'm there i, I listen i listen very well but most of the time we just we just talk and yeah. that, that part is really the absolute best jonathan is of just feeling connected to someone in a way that you don't have to explain yourself no, absolutely i would love that like because honestly at the end of the day we just want to be treated like uh regular people they just uh just so happen to be living with a with a transplanted organ mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah and, and so exactly exactly you know, that's exactly right and i see it looks like philip um as well yeah, yeah, yeah. philip harris jones from a, a second chance podcast you were recently on their uh podcast as well yeah gosh yeah. philip's great you know he's he's one of the best teammates I've ever had, had in my life um you know we met on the track and field I think it was in 2008 yeah and there's something about like you know I'm talking about Philip but I could say this about 
you know, another hundred athletes I've met around the world, when you, when yeah. you meet them, yeah. you might only meet for like five minutes, but that connection is so deep and so strong. Like they're one of the best friends you'll ever have in your life. And so, you know, I hope everyone gets the joy of, of going to a games or doing something like this with you or with Philip and his great show, or, yeah. you know, kind of things we're doing as well, like this, this recipient led social media content we're all creating together. I think it's really important. And I think that recipients everywhere really notice the difference because they, they know that someone who understands them is talking to them and that that connection and sense of purpose and dignity is, yep. is huge. So I think what you guys are you know doing and just since I saw uh, Philip pop up there and have to give him a shout out and also um, Anthony from Kidney Trails is doing some good things sure um, as well. So a lot of really good things going on uh, out there. That's just domestically, internationally. It's another scene entirely. So yeah, no, these podcasts and, um, you know, these things that we're doing is a very positive uh, thing in the community. And uh, what we're trying to do is we share stories like yours, um, you know, and we're, we're trying to spread hope for other patients that will come along and say, look, um, you know, kidney disease is tough. It's a battle. But, you know, look at Zach, man. He's he's thriving. He's out here. Uh, you know, he's uh, in, in the transplant games, winning medals, and he's went on and, and lived life, you know, and yeah. uh, I think what we're trying to prove is his life is not over with yet. Um, mm -hmm. You have a purpose, you have a plan. And um, this is, you know, it, it can you can live uh, a great life uh, as a transplant patient. And uh, and I think that's what you're doing, Zach, uh, with with what you're doing with the uh, world transplant. Why don't we talk about uh, world transplant athletes? What what is this? Uh, what what is world transplant athletes all about? Yeah, I mean, I said a little bit at the early part of the show, but it's a, a group of transplant recipients. So there's uh, we're based in the United States, Australia, and, and Europe, mm -hmm. and we create all the content you'll see on mostly Facebook and, and Instagram. We'd like to branch mm -hmm. out to other yep. things. And, yep. um, you know, it's tips and tricks buying for transplant athletes anywhere, yep. anytime online. And it really came from the transplant uh, games experiences where you talk to other transplant athletes and say, gosh, that this guy, um, you know, Simon from the UK or Stephen Jarvis, a really good friend of mine from the UK. He's sort of a brother from a, another, another, you know, multi grandmother, but he's almost like a brother to me, Stephen mm -hmm. Jarvis. You know, like on, a, on the track or you're sitting next to the pool or, you know, after a cycling event, you talk to these other athletes and it's you, you talk a little bit about, you know, their their background, heart transplant or so. But you realize, gosh, that if I could just capture that gem of advice that person just shared with me, that would be the most amazing thing. Like, you know, Jillian Best in Canada, she won five gold medals and five world records at the games in um, Newcastle. And yep. I really just wanted to find ways to share her stories with wider audience because I want someone from South Africa or Australia or Japan or anywhere in the world to to come across you or, or Jillian in this case and say, I'm going to beat her and, and I'm going to win and I'm going to beat her because she gave me really good advice. Now, you know, she's going to be a champion and so forth, but just the, the motivation to enjoy yourself by getting better to me is, is such an intrinsic, beautiful thing. I, I just wanted to capture uh, as many of those stories as possible. And, you know, we've been, been at it for uh, about a year now, uh, formally, and uh, we're getting really nice traction on Instagram, especially. And we have an event coming up in, in June. It's called uh, the World Transplant Athletes Life Event, June 25th through the 26th. All people have to do is do something active and then just post a hashtag um, and a picture of themselves online. And it's for 24 hours. We're going to have a spinning globe. And every, you know, every time you pass a time zone, we're going to say that that part of the world is finished. And, you know, you now, Jonathan, are a part of a, a world of friends. You still haven't met a lot of them. That uh, once you meet them, you're, you'll just be so touched. And what we're trying to just do is make sure that everyone knows that they have incredible family and, and friends all over across the world through this free online to, um, world transplant athletes life event awesome man this sounds incredible yeah it really yeah. does yeah you, you know ever since uh you know 2019 i crashed into dialysis and uh prior to that i, I didn't have any friends in the transplant community i didn't have mm -hmm. any friends in the uh, kidney community yeah. uh and but once i entered the kidney community uh and the transplant community 
uh, man, it just seemed like that I was welcomed with open arms and uh, the love and the uh, connection with uh, some of these people has been incredible. And I've only met people virtually. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I've met a few people in yeah. person, but just virtually. So I could only imagine the connection, uh, the, the human connection, uh, meeting someone in person. Uh, and the bond that you you know that you're you're speaking of when you're uh, going to these events and uh, and things like that it's it's I can just feel it coming through the podcast yeah. <laughs> so I can only imagine you know what kind of love that you would feel from meeting these type of uh, individuals uh, in person. So. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's extraordinary, and that's all you can say about it. It's just the most magical thing you can you could feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just feels like a big family. Really does. Yeah. <laughs> virtually so yeah uh, i can't i can't wait to meet up with some of these uh other other uh, warriors out here and uh, transplant recipients uh, as well you know i'm partial to kidneys but i do know some people that are uh, liver transplant and uh yeah. some, some people are kidney pancreas uh transplant and uh, you know i've met some uh really incredible other uh tra- i know one uh heart transplant recipient as well so mm-hmm. you know i've met a, i've met a lot of different uh, various transplant patients and uh each each one of them is unique and everyone has their own unique story and mm-hmm. uh it's really incredible yeah no it absolutely is it absolutely is yeah so mm-hmm. But I, I do appreciate what you're doing uh, over on Instagram. Um, you seem to like to uh, uh, share uh, quite a bit of uh, things that I'm doing, and I always appreciate that. Uh, yeah. That's really uh, that's really awesome, and uh, I really appreciate that. So that's that's a really cool thing that you're doing. It's it's an honor, Jonathan. I re- we really love sharing anything that you put out there, and as much as we can. You know, we really try to just get it out there as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's really cool. Honestly. Um, I see also that you're, you know, you, you've done some podcasting of your own. Uh, mm-hmm. you've also, uh, written a book. You're also an author of, uh, how many, how many books have you written? Well, I've written two. I, I, I count one as 1.0 and the second one is 1.5. It wasn't a full on book. I'm working on my, my next book in, in a, in a series. Um, so that book is called discovering your human algorithm, how to live life with meaning and purpose. And any transplant recipient will see a lot of the lessons I've learned in that book. Um, so the, the book is like anything, you know, the, the six principles of life that always make me happy. So the, the first principle is um, athletics, to be human is to move. And so, and then once you moved around a while, you kind of see the world and say, you know, this is kind of, I'm five blocks away from home now. So the second A of life is uh, adventure, to be human is to explore. And then after you've explored for a while, you're kind of starting to learn some things. So the third A is to be human is to, to learn, so academics. And after you've gotten pretty good at that, then you start creating. So the next one is uh, to be human is to, uh, is to be an artist, is to create things. And so, you know, the, the whole book is really based on and how to be happy with whatever situation you're in at the moment. And a lot of the lessons in the book are directly from my particular transplant journey and you know I was, I was really fortunate and i got four number ones on amazon bestseller in 2020 and i'm looking forward to finishing up that book at some point with my crazy life and getting the next one out there and uh you know happy to share a link to your viewers if you want but yeah it was it was a thrill to do um you know the the book and you know, i was glad happy to get some success from it but more importantly you know hopefully someone reads it in in this world and and says, oh, that's that's fantastic. And, you know, the couple of the reviews I read on online, someone said, I was reading your book, and in your book you said, you know, it's really important to walk. Or I, I forget exactly how I said it in the book. And he said, you know, instead of reading your book, I decided to get up and go for a walk. And I thought that was the best um, review I could ever get from someone, that reading that sentence in the context of everything else I was sharing motivated someone just to get up and, and move. So I was pretty happy about that moment in, in the book. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. That's uh, that's awesome. That's that's what you want is mm-hmm. to motivate someone to uh, get involved with, uh, especially exercise. I mean, and the benefits of exercise. I got to be honest. M- my first forty years of life, I didn't do so well at that, uh, Zach. But uh, I learned the hard way uh, that exercise is a, a vital, um, yeah. you know, part of life, and that we have to have it. Uh, you know, cause our body is, is a muscle, you know, so to mm-hmm. speak. And, and we have to, 
we have to move it to to keep it going and, and keep it strong. And and like you were talking about, uh, I find myself uh, when I'm walking. I remember when I first started walking, I thought I was really doing something when I started uh, walking about a half a mile. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, okay, I've I've done something, and you know, now here I am, a couple years later, I can walk five miles with no yeah. problem at all. And it, and it, there's something inside of me that just wants to keep moving forward i, I want to keep pushing until i'm you know I'm, my next goal is seven miles with no problem yeah. you know and, and it, i think it's something within the human body that just wants to continue like you said explore and, and keep going and, and keep pushing yourself to see how far you can really go and, and it's it's really awesome but again you know yeah. we can't for for me and you we we couldn't do this if it wasn't for our donors and because uh, that that's what ultimately impacted our life and, and gave us another chance to be able to do things like this. So I think that's what a, is an important uh, aspect of this show and mm-hmm. things that, you know, we need to uh, definitely address during this show is that, you know, we couldn't do any of these things. We couldn't accomplish the things that we're doing in this life uh, if it hadn't been for our donors, which um, Zach's donors just so happen to be his parents, which is an incredible incredible story how yeah. how are your parents doing since uh transplant uh, yeah i'm glad you asked uh they're fine both of them i think the day after and this is kind of the typical exactly what the doctor said so for a donor uh what the doctors will tell you is that you know the day after is really really hard and then day three you're starting to feel almost normal again and for my parents they followed that exact same pattern in my dad's case he walked four miles four days after donating his kidney. Oh, wow. Um, so he was, you know, he's an extraordinary uh, athlete and he walked and, you know, you know, I was in the hospital bed, he was still recovering and, you know, waved goodbye to him. And I don't know, an hour and a half later, whatever it was, and he was back and he went for a walk. And my mom, um, she came to my, my bed, I think like the next day, even though she was in pain and just came over and, you know, hugged me and, and the rest of it. So both of them, did extremely well and and they've never had any problems related to donating their kidneys ever. So yeah. I think that's an important aspect to uh, for people to hear too because a lot of people I think are scared uh, because of the the fact of one you know have questions and things like that like how long will I live and what happens you know what what happens if I get sick or this that or the other. So uh, it's nice to hear uh, positive stories which I will tell you uh, I, I hear a lot of positive stories from, uh, living kidney donors and most of them are doing well and, yeah. and living just a normal life, just like me and you are with one yeah. kidney. Uh, so it's, it's, it's great to hear that. I'm glad your parents are doing really well. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. They'll, they'll appreciate you asking. Absolutely. Well, uh, where can people find you at? Um, you mean physically or digitally? <laughs> yeah, on on a on a social scale, as far as social media and things like that. Yeah, so social media, um, it's going to be World Transplant Athletes, all spelled mm-hmm. together, either on Facebook or Instagram. We're on other platforms as well, but those are the two we're focusing on right now, mm-hmm. um, and really working to get a lot of awareness out there, um, like you guys are as well. So you can certainly find us there. Um, you can email me at worldtransplantathletes at gmail dot com. Um, or if you type in, you know, Zach Brooks and Google and you find a book or, you know, I've had some YouTube uh, things as well in terms of giving speeches in the past and so forth. You know, if they have any of my links, feel free to reach out. I mean, I would love to talk to anyone who's watching your show and, and um, you know, interact with them in any way and help them in any way possible. And, and really, if there's any recipients out there who who want to share some content in terms of you know tips they have for other people things they've learned they can get in touch with me and we can try to find a way to have them do a little 30 second tip that they can share with the world of of recipients out there and i, I would love to to hear from, from everyone out there absolutely yeah and you have a youtube channel as well that you you just spoke of uh, and you did some podcasting uh, sort of in the same format that I'm doing here with you, mm-hmm. uh, where you interviewed uh, some other athletes as well uh, mm-hmm. from all over the world, like uh, yeah. all kind of different places. I think I watched one uh, with a guy from England that uh, you had interviewed. I forgot his name. Simon. But, I think it's okay, Simon. Yeah, Simon. Yeah. Simon. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, guys, go check it out. Uh, he's at World Transplant Athletes on YouTube, yeah. uh, which is, um, you know, and – uh, he could use some support over there. He's got some great interviews over there that I think uh, a lot of people yeah. in this uh, community would definitely enjoy. Yeah, so, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for the shout out. And in those um, 
we have sub those all those interviews subtitled in I think now 13 languages. So you know if someone's from another region of the world, they speak some English, um, they can oftentimes find their own language uh, subtitled in a lot of those. So we're you know because of its world transplant athletes, you know it's really important for us to connect with the world where those folks are and many times that means language and of course that's my background in my in my uh, doctoral studies so it, it's a natural thing for me to do personally and yeah. professionally anyway but it's very important for us to to make sure that we're giving as much content out there that's in other languages that people know that they belong to the, absolutely the that that's a great thing um that's that's something I should probably look at at converting some of my videos as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, that's but awesome. We can talk, maybe we, there's a fun way that we can uh, combine some efforts here and there. Yeah. No, and I think that's important because, mm -hmm. hey, uh, kidney disease doesn't stop in the U.S. It's everywhere. It does not discriminate. And uh, it's, no, it uh, it's, a, it's global. And so, uh, you know, we definitely need to be spreading awareness uh, everywhere, not just the United States. So uh, yeah. that's definitely amazing. But uh, shout out to uh, Alex Rosa, uh, who showed up. Uh, spice up your life. <laughs> she's uh, she's really cool. She wanted to make sure that we got this uh, email address out there for uh, Thanks, Alex. everyone to contact. Alex is an amazing uh amazing uh person and uh, i really appreciate her for watching tonight and throwing up uh the email address for her <laughs> so thanks again alex and uh you guys can go check her out and uh so she's a she's she's a really cool individual she's fixing to be dr spice so oh uh, dr she, spice okay <laughs> yeah she's well, really i'm dr cool. z so I'm, i'd love to meet dr, dr. <laughs> spice, so that's awesome yeah. yeah she's cool and uh you have a degree also, uh, you have a PhD, actually, yeah. and uh, is it psychology or, or what is it that you you work in? Yeah, so the, the yeah, definitely psychology was a big uh, focus of mine. I'll just tell people the what I actually studied. It's easier to talk about that versus the colleges and everything else. So sure. what I studied is decision making for people who speak multiple languages. So, for example... You know, most of us in the United States come across a Spanish speaker. There's a lot of Spanish speakers in the United States. And think to yourself, does that person make the same decision as I do if I speak English as a first language? So that's what I studied. You know, so that it's sort of psychology, it's language, it's other things. And, um, and people actually do make, um, you know, very similar decisions. But in fact, people who speak English as a second language make better decisions oftentimes than someone who speaks English as a first language. So my PhD, I got it from uh, University of Arizona. I graduated from College of Science and College of Humanities. And, you know, my research was on this decision-making question for people who speak multiple languages. And I still publish on that with a colleague of mine actually in, in Texas, at Texas Christian University, and still work on that on the side um, in terms of getting some, some academic work done and information out there on the importance of um, speaking multiple languages, but actually the real advantage of speaking multiple languages. Yeah, that's really awesome, man. Um, you sound like a really highly intelligent uh, individual. You've been blessed with uh, a lot of knowledge there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that, but I, I definitely <laughs> think that the only, only thing I would really take credit for is, is just working hard. You know, I think if you just wake up every day and, and have some goals and and have a process by which you assess yourself and say, okay, did I work this much? And did I concentrate? What, whatever it is for you, you can really get a lot in this world. Um, you know, Philip, I think recently graduated, you know, college and so forth. So I think it's, it's just a commitment to, to learning and making yourself better. I don't know if there's any raw, incredible intelligence. I think it's just, I'm committed to getting better every single day. Yeah. And once at the end of that process, like, let's say this moment right now is the end of whatever I've done before, you know, I can look back and say, oh, this is this is pretty cool. But my mindset's always going to be, you know, I haven't done anything. I have to wake up tomorrow morning and, and do it, do it again. Yeah. And I think if you have that mindset, then it helps. And I think a lot of us as recipients, we have huge advantages sometimes sure. in the world because we've been through something so difficult. Then once you get past that, you know, you're like, oh, I, I got this. Life's yeah. not too bad. And, oh, I have to do all this hard work. Well, I was in the hospital and dialysis centers and dealing with insurance and everything else. Like, that's really hard work. 
Yeah, it is. This is easy, but that the practice you've gone through in, in your transplant journey makes you actually pretty good. And, and then you actually have advantages in this world over some sure. folks who haven't, fortunately for them, haven't had to go through this. Yeah. I've kind of got the mindset that, you know, if when you stop learning, then you've, you're just done. I mean, you've, you, mm -hmm. you know, it, t to me, life is all about the journey and, and learning. Uh, you're just continually learning and, uh, you know, uh, by any means necessary. Sometimes life uh, is the teacher <laughs> and teaches us yes, things. Yes. And uh, I was going to tell you, because, uh, you know, I, I told you, I, I feel like that you're a very intelligent uh, individual. And uh, I don't know if you believe in this or not, but, uh, you know, uh, some people believe that when we have uh, donated organs that we take on uh, some of the um, attributes of our of our donor. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I have this weird, strange craving now for peanut butter and peanuts. I, I've never <laughs> had it before. Oh, wow. And, and now I'm just like, I got to have uh, daily. I have to have my handful of peanuts. I don't know where it came from, but um, I was never like this before. <laughs> and so, but do you think in some way maybe uh, your parents uh, gave you some uh, very strong genes of uh, wisdom uh, through your uh, transplanted organs? Yeah, I'll answer my parents' uh, question uh, question in a second, but I actually, your story might have my friend uh, Brian from North Carolina, a really good swimmer. He, um, he got his uh, heart from a man, I think a Mexican man, and I think it was Atlanta, and he woke up speaking Spanish. He didn't actually speak Spanish before that. Oh my God. He wanted like a taco, con chile, no algo bastante picante, ya sabe. Like he really wanted something, you know, and I thought that was just the most, I'd heard kind of about that just generally, but when my friend told me that story, I was like, wow, that's an amazing story. You wake up and speaking a little bit of Spanish and the first thing you want is a taco. Like that's incredible. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is. That yeah. is incredible. And you know, my case, um, you know, I, my parents and I'm, I already have a lot of them in me obviously, but I, I have noticed sort of differences and I, I don't know how to attribute them completely. So after my first transplant, I actually was, a, um, I got into a dance company and so I was dancing in an amateur level. You know, we were dancing in front of five, 600 people. Um, so that was extremely athletic. And I, I feel like I got that from my, my dad, like the athleticism, but sort of this desire to express yourself. And then, um, and then uh, you know, back to my second transplant is when I started my, my academic uh, life. And that's got the PhD. So, um, I, you know, I think I got a little bit of that in terms of like the first transplant, I did the dance. And then after that, I was in Hollywood. I was an act actor for a while. So I have some credits on IMDb. So 10 credits actually all together. Oh, wow. And that's I, cool. So I think, you know, it's, it, it was kind of there somewhere inside of me, but there was something about getting that first uh, kidney that kind of motivated me. And, and some, the very, it's very clear. Like when it's inside of you, like, I think the, the, the viewers will understand this. Like, you know that it's true, but it's hard to kind of put that into sort of anything scientific. But there were certain things that I felt that came from that organ, from my dad, that made me want to do um, that kind of thing, like the said, dance company and acting. And then after that, it was all about academics. And so, you know, I feel like there, there was a little bit of umph from those organs that wasn't there before. Cool, man. That's, that's awesome. That's yeah. It's really amazing. You, you mentioned acting and, uh, you know, um, what what sort of uh, acting was you doing? Was you doing some commercial work? or Bad, bad acting. Very, very bad acting. <laughs> bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the movies were so bad, Jonathan, that the Internet archives came around, you know, the service that like goes and tries to archive everything that's ever been put out on the Internet. And they took a pass. They just they they looked at the movies <laughs> with their algorithms, uh, they said, you know. The guy's not very good. He's a bad actor. So I, you know, I'm, um, I was a Hollywood B-level Hollywood actor, um, and B-level Hollywood are not really very good actors. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I did a movie. I think that it, it was on Amazon Prime. A friend of mine found it, and my role was like I was a bad date in that movie. Um, I played a, a bartender in a horror film where um, I told the kids, you know, don't go to the mountains. I had like grew out this giant beard and everything else. I said, don't go to the mountains. You're going to get your throat slashed. And what did the kids do? Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went, went to, to the, the mountain. mountain. <laughs> but I was that guy, you know, warning people in the horror film, don't do this. 
so you know, I had I had a lot of fun, you know, doing it, and um, and then when it was over, I was okay with that too. But I, I think that's just an, a nice little story that you know, after a transplant, and I was pretty, I was older at that point. I was in my you know, early thirties uh, doing that. I mean, I just did it, and I think that you know, when we're whenever we have our transplants, whatever comes next, like if you wanted to do something and you think you're 22, 20 years too late, you're not just do it. I mean, just yeah. absolutely go for it. You know, just because I see Philip's name a couple of times, just calling him out, shouting out again, like, you know, he's done so many amazing things in his life and like his educational prowess, you know, through all of his stuff is really remarkable. And I'm sure, uh, you know, there's a thousand of these stories. Like you get a transplant and after that, your life begins in a solely a totally different way and you can really choose like i'm going to be this person i'm going to get this degree or i'm going to have a family or i'm going to have a house or like whatever that is and you're doing this amazing podcast so i, I think that you know taking the opportunities from the life is is really really important and whatever you want to do you should absolutely do it so, you know, all these things i'm talking about the acting the dance company uh the phd um, the the athletic stuff, the world transplant athletes, all this came after my second transplant. You know, this isn't stuff I did early in my life. It's all the stuff that I did after. So yeah. I just think it's an example of choosing to live. Absolutely, man. That's that's some awesome stuff. I appreciate you dropping that on us. That's that's some incredible words of wisdom there. But um, you know, with this show, uh, Hope with Jonathan, what we like to do is we like to give opportunity for our guests to uh leave some words of uh words of hope uh, yeah, for, uh, awesome. for for those that are out there that you know maybe they just been recently diagnosed or maybe they're living life right now on dialysis and they're waiting on a transplant and uh maybe they're just having a tough time with it or they just really don't know where to turn or um maybe you could drop some words of hope for them that would uh inspire them to want to continue in the journey what what do you have for them yeah i mean i i think the number one thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, if someone's like on dialysis or going through this process and someone comes up to them and says, oh, I understand. I, I think that they have every right to say, no, you don't. You don't understand what I'm going through right now at all. Um, you don't know the misery and you don't know like how much work it took me to be this nice to you at this very moment today because I'm so wiped out and exhausted and the, 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 the amount I have to pretend um, you know, it's, it's hard. So I think they have every right to tell someone, even if that's a well-meaning person, like, no, you don't understand because, um, you know, I, I've had my journey and it kind of relates to yours and in other, you know, um, Dr. Spice and some other folks, but not completely, you know, like there was something really hard about my journey, but maybe your journey was even harder. So I, I don't, I don't like to compare those kind of journeys, but in terms of other things like, um, you know, you as a, um, if you're on dialysis, like, remember, like, you are the, your absolute best advocate. Like, you have to become a master of that healthcare system. You have to become a master of the details of what's going into your body. And if you fight for yourself in a really fun way with, you know, with whatever kind of good energy you can get there, that's the best thing you can do. Because in the end, if you if you show that you have, you're energized to, to live beyond the thing you're going through right now, the system and the world and the people and the spirits and everything else are going to start opening up for you. And like a game of matrix, the, the world's going to sort of flutter open and you're going to find your way through it. So I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, inspiration from, from anyone who's, who's watching, who's going through dialysis right now. And I think that they should know that know themselves best and also make themselves the best through, through this process. And I, and I feel like I got off track. I'm not sure that's the best words of words of wisdom, but First of all, I'll just try to summarize. It's okay to tell someone they don't understand because it's true they don't. But second of all, like you are, you are the person who's going to guide yourself, like a like a captain on a ship going through these troubled waters. You're going to get yourself to the other side, of course, with your friends and family and everything else. But in the end, it's it's you. And if you have that that faith in yourself, you're good to the other side, and you'll do amazing things in your life. And I can't wait to meet meet you. And you can tell me I did this really cool thing in life. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think what you said was amazing. Um, yeah, you have to master uh, the medical system, because especially with insurance, because, 
you know, uh, man, yeah. I came in with like no knowledge of it at all. And then wham, I got hit with it. And it, it took me a while to understand the difference between like private insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, and one was state and one was government and one was, you know, and this, that and the other. So it was it's really a, a, a mind as mind boggling as understanding kidney disease and mm-hmm. and uh, the prescriptions and this, that and the other. So, you know, it, it's a lot to intake, yeah. but you can do it. And um, it's it's it can be over incredibly overwhelming. And, and so it's best that you have a great support system. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, Zach had uh, I mean, he had an amazing support system and his parents yeah. stepping up to be his donors. Uh, you have such an incredible uh, story, uh, Zach. It's a, it's a very unique story, uh, especially oh, yes. in the tr- in transplant uh, uh, space, you know, uh, be, you know, especially with your parents being both the donors. And uh, I'm glad I was I'm really being sincere that it's awesome to find out that your parents are doing really well. Yeah, um, that's 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 really great. That's an important fact that uh, a lot of people out there definitely need to know. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, for that. no problem. And uh, also, you know, everything that you've accomplished and everything, man, it almost sounds like you need to uh, have a biographic uh, sort of novel out there or, or movie <laughs> made after yeah. your life. It's really incredible. Some of the things that, you know, you've been able to accomplish. Well, if anyone out there wants to, <laughs> to <laughs> put, you know, pencil to paper and, and write a few things, I'd be happy to, to share some more. You know, I'm working on some things myself, too, uh, in the background because I'd like to share these lessons that I've learned and it helps someone, you know, like all of us, you know, uh, all the, the um, viewers and you, like we can just help one person. That's all it's about. So if I'm helping someone, great. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, listen, guys, uh, really appreciate uh, Zach coming on the show. Um, you know, you, you've sat and listened to his story. Uh, what an incredible journey he's had. And uh, it's been a really fun podcast, very informative. We've shared a lot of great information in here. And uh, thanks again, Zach, for everything that you're doing in the community. And thanks for doing the podcast with me. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And uh, again, want to thank everybody for uh, showing up tonight, showing support. Uh, again, Alex Rosa, uh, Philip Harris Jones Jr., Second Chance Podcast, uh, Crawford Wall, who I'll be uh, interviewing soon on my show. Uh, Charlotte Buer, thank you very much for uh, your support tonight. My wife, Melissa, so many that dropped in here. Jared Brown from the Warriors Quest show. Uh, so really incredible uh, support tonight on the show. Thanks again, guys. I hope you guys will stay blessed out there. Uh, definitely spread love to everyone and uh, take care of your kidneys. God bless. We're going to sign off. Thank you. Jonathan is created as an informational, educational, and entertainment show. Hope with Jonathan hosts, guests, partners, provide information on the basis of research and personal experiences, and is not to be taken as or implied as diagnosis of any disease or treatment. Hope with Jonathan, its host and guests and partners, recommend and encourage you to speak to your medical team before implementing any treatment or diagnosis found on this show or any product, service associated to Hope with Jonathan. Hey guys, have you been over to HopeWithJonathan.com? You can actually listen to the audio podcast, watch live streaming interviews, purchase merch to help support Hope With Jonathan podcast, read blogs, and much, much more. For more information on this, go check out HopeWithJonathan.com where we share stories of hope.